As for the lab setup for this course, I mentioned that we will need a VirtualBox hypervisor on our host system. And then we'll also set up a forensic workstation. Now there's definitely some flexibility here. I have a tutorial available that guides us through the installation of this forensic workstation. And I will be using a Windows 2019 Server Essentials VM, just because this is in terms of performance, it's easier to navigate around and also is pretty quick to set up. And we'll also enable Ubuntu subsystem for Linux so that we can also run Linux tools on this Windows forensic workstation. So that gives us the best of both workstations. Worlds. You can also use a forensic workstation of your choice if you have something available, especially if it's Windows based. Now there's no need to install a separate VM for this, but virtualization also comes with some advantages that we'll discuss when we get to this point. Uh, but first and foremost, it is the advantage that in a lab environment, you can snapshot and revert back to a known good state previously. So that's why virtualization is just easy when you're dealing with some home lab or testing environments. And next we'll then set up the target system. This is just gonna be a Windows 10 VM and we will analyze this Windows 10 VM for any attack techniques and patterns that we are going to apply on this by running a attack simulation script. Now overall, of course, this requires some system resources. So overall, we need to consider that we need to have at least four gigabyte of RAM available, a memory available for the forensic workstation. Now the target system and the forensic workstation, they do not have to run at the same time. So you can just run first the target system and then the forensic workstation. And so four gigabyte of RAM overall for the forensic workstation itself is sufficient. Now, forensics analysis, that always comes with a lot of data that we usually have to move and store and analyze. Now, 150 gigabytes of storage is what we might need overall if we just keep all the data that we're gonna work with on our disk or on our host system. It's not required to have all the storage available throughout the entire course. And the reason is that it just breaks down to about 20 gigabytes for the target system that we just need in the beginning. And it will set up the forensic workstation with about 100 gigabyte of disk storage. And half of that is actually not needed throughout the course until the very end when we are dealing with super timelines. And then for additional storage on your host system, you should have about 25 gigabytes available. And that's mostly also just because of the memory and the disk images that we'll extract from our target system. So overall, these are the requirements for our host system. Now I am able to run this on my own MacBook Pro, which is already a couple of years old. You might be able to run it on your own system or otherwise you can also consider some alternative options such as cloud environments, which are for a couple of hours, not extremely expensive. So the choice is yours, but I hope this makes sense and I'm excited to get started.